Yeah, I know, King, whatever. I guess it's the intro. What is up, everybody? I am Luke from the Master Sword Valley, and welcome back to more Let's Play Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. In the last episode, we got all the remaining Triforce, or not Triforce, yes, technically we did get the Triforce charts, but we got the rest of the treasure charts and filled up every single square except for this last one which we will head there in this episode, trust me. So in this episode, we are here on Outset Island to get the piece of the Triforce that is here because on our incredible chart, there's one listed for Outset Island. But we've been neglecting to seeing our grandmother in a very long time. Last time I saw her was to grab, was technically uh, when we came to see Jaboon. So let's go see her again. She can't see me do this. Yeah, she'll actually, she actually won't let you hold on to uh, multiple uses of elixir soup here. Yes, I would like some more soup. Yes, please. Such a well-mannered boy. Thanks, Grandma. Can we get some more elixir soup? Which is going to help us a little bit, kind of, in what we're going to do this episode. Yeah, we love your soup. Because you're a great grandmother, you know. Anyway, going out. Where we need to go is a place that we've never gone before. We've actually seen it before. We just haven't exactly gone there. So we can either pull out the hook shot or use our Deku Leaf and from really high up. Because what we need to do is, you can see Link look up here, hook shot to the tree and go up. We're in a completely other area of Outset Island right here, as you can see. There's all the houses down there. And over all the way over there is where we had to go up to get to the uh, forest where Tetra is. We're actually on the other side of it over here. There's a giant boulder, so we had to have uh, at least made our way to the earth temple well not necessarily we actually have to complete the earth temple first before doing anything with this anyway if we drop down here there is a ledge down there and there's a pot on it in gamecube version if you have the tingle tuner connected you can drop what's called a tingle bomb on that ledge as long as you blow up the pot and another pot will appear giving you an orange rupee as a result of it you can play the song of passing in infinite number of times to get an infinite number amount of rupees for it so if you're still struggling with money, there's your solution. But it's only on GameCube because there's no tingle tuner in this game. There's this stupid tingle bottle, whatever this thing is. Can't even use it. Anyway, pick up the rock and see Link's adorable face once again. Just looks so freaking good. And let's drop down. Welcome to a place that I don't like here. This is known as the Savage Labyrinth here. The Savage Labyrinth. Deep in the never-ending darkness, the golden shard you seek awaits. So this is required for us to do here. We got a fairy right there. Um, I'm going to go and I guess I'm going to equip these. No, not the iron boots. I keep doing that for some reason. This is a, technically, a required 30-floor dungeon for us. But it's actually 50 floors. So what I'm going to do is speed up and play music over it. And every 10 floors is a rest floor and a chance to leave the place. But to get every reward, you have to make it down to the 50th floor. So let's just go ahead and speed up the mute, speed it up and play some music. Uh, these places are all reminiscent of the various dungeons. Floor 10 here. Um, I should mention, you might have seen in the um, speed up that the enemies don't drop anything. So um, as a result, like health is very limited until you get to these rest areas. Your best bet is to pull out the grappling hook. You can use it to steal heart from them. That is if you didn't already steal their treasure, like use it on a moblin, take their skill necklace, and then use it to take a heart from them.
But yes, this is the one. I don't know if this is the last floor or not, but these dark nuts that have a shield are uh, a separate picture for the Nintendo gallery. Hurricane Spoon! Wow, you missed me! You missed! How dumb are you? I was there, stunned, because I just used the Hurricane Spin, and you missed me! Wow, how dumb can you be? Oh, I got heat so heat in that moment. It actually made my heart pump a lot more. But this is it. We have made it to the 30th floor of the Savage Labyrinth. We can technically stop here if we would like. But of course, I'm not going to. Get all these rupees first. You, Because you might as well. I mean, do you really want to venture down here again and get them all? If you do, what the hell is wrong with you? I'm just kidding. So we stand on this once again. Play as Wind's Requiem. Because it's always the wind that will summon the ultimate, a shard of the ultimate power. Or the ultimate courage. Pop it open. And we get... Another Triforce shard. We have four more to grab. But that also opens up the portal out and these two sources of light. As you expect, we're not done. So as long as you've completed the Earth Temple and gotten the Mirror Shield, you can go on. There's a whole 20 more floors. I'd also like to add that I stole a bomb from a Dark Nut. Just let that sink in. As you can get, as you can tell by these areas, these places are all based on temples we've been to already. Such as the inclusion of Reedheads. Actually, a very good strategy. Just make them hit the <laughs> hit each other. <laughs> okay, this is funny. This is so, this is really freaking funny.
Yes, it is. This is it. Now, the rewards will actually change depending on if you're playing GameCube or HD. If you're following along with me on HD here, you get yourself a not-so-worthwhile reward. You get the Hero's Charm. I already mentioned that this is what you get when you turn in 40 Joy Pendants to the teacher on Windfall Island. However, if you're playing GameCube, that instead would be a piece of heart. Much more worth it than a frick, than the freaking Hero's Charm, because again, all it does is let you see HP of enemies, which would have been more helpful had we gotten that earlier in our adventure. We put it on, and it is a cosmetic thing. I don't really like how Link looks with it, but like it said, we can see the HP bars of our enemies. I'm gonna take it off because we don't have anything to fight for a good while here, but I'll show it off soon. All right. So with that, we now have four shards of the Triforce and we have three charts, meaning we're only missing one Triforce anything really. One more item related to the Triforce is all that we're missing. And like, if we take a look at our map again, at the incredible chart, I'd already mentioned that it's aboard that creepy ship right there. Now we tried to go to that ship before, but we ended up proving it not useful to us. It's a ghost ship. It'll disappear on us when we try to get close. So, where do we have to go to get that? Well, as you probably guessed, the one square we don't have filled in on our map. Let's go there. I guess while we're in the square, we'll go and take out this um, giant octa that's here. Oh, I guess while I'm doing this, I, sh I'm, I meant to talk about this as well. That be lucky that you are not playing the Japanese version. I think the re I still think the reward is a lot better in um, GameCube because you know it's a piece of heart, something that actually you know will like help your health and such. The, they should have given you the hero's charm earlier in, the, in your adventure on HD. But in the Japanese version, you make it all the way to the bottom of the Savage Labyrinth in that version. And your reward for that is a yellow rupee. I am not even kidding that that's your only reward for getting all the way to the bottom of the Savage Labyrinth in the Japanese version. Like, isn't that just dumb? So as you probably guess, uh, the rewards for like the way you get the um, treasure charts in the Japanese version is actually different. It would lead to a series of other treasure charts. Like you grab one treasure chart, dig up treasure, then it leads, then you get a chart for it, which leads to another chest. So that's kind of, that's how it worked in the Japanese version. Um, but here we obviously have just one chart leads to one reward, not a chain of it. But we go ahead and get a um, orange rupee for that. Thank goodness. Anyway, now pulling out to the island. And our final square to fill in on our map. And also, it's not exactly our last map fishing because we haven't gotten the one for Outset, Windfall, or Four Second Fortress. This is Diamond Step Isle, our last square that we haven't filled in. That's some great information. Use the treasure that's hidden on the island that vanishes. Uh, the thing that vanishes, as soon as you get near it, it won't vanish. Yeah, so it's talking about... Uh, so he actually reveals that that's your hint to um, come here and get you the last piece of the Triforce. Because he expects something that creepy would have something that rewarding on it. Unlike in the ship that went on to inspire in the one in Phantom Hourglass, you get a reward when on that ship and not just your soul gets sucked away by Bellum. I'm sure Bellum would have been created at the point at this point in um, the, time, the timeline um, while Link is on this journey before he starts his journey in Phantom Hourglass. Now going down here, we have a place that almost everyone hates, but I honestly don't mind it really. This is a teleporter pot maze. Yeah, they're jerks about this. This place is also re uh, reused for um, the place that's on, what is it? I think it's Needle Rock Island, where we had that uh, place to light all the torches with. So unfortunately here, it's all luck based depending on where what pot will Moving forward, which pots will take you to the end and or the beginning. And every single enemy here is a floor master. Just roll past them and you'll be fine. They will throw pots, I guess, but not really that terrible. Got you. I believe what we want to do is take the left one. I could be wrong about this. Okay, yes, I was completely wrong. Twice in a row, really? Oh, and all the floor masters respawn. That's lovely. All right, let's try the pot next to the one that we came through. Wrong again. Oh, 
All right, now I got the correct bot. We go in here, and I don't know if I remember if it's that one or not. Come on, two at once, baby, two at once. Give me. Yeah. All right, now let's try this one. Leads back to the beginning. I'm gonna throw something. No, it doesn't. It leaves in the correct area and right next to a floor master. No. Oh, nice try, buddy. There may there looks like there are some other chests that might have rupees in it, but this is the important one that we need. This will help us find the ghost ship. We don't need the spirits of power, wisdom, and courage. We just need the ghost ship chart. So we can check this on our map, and this will help us obviously locate it. Let's go back out and check it out. I'm not gonna go for the rupees. I don't need them. So if we take a look at that ghost ship chart, ghost ship chart right here, it'll show us a bunch of various islands. So this here is Five Star Isle, Spectacle Island, Bomb Island, Diamond Step, Crescent Moon, uh, Great Fish Isle, and the Star Belt right here. But unfortunately, uh, these are only during moon phases. So these are only at nighttime here. So let's go ahead and switch to night and check it again. All right, so the moon tonight is a half moon or something like that. So let's check the chart again. And it's located at Bomb Island. So let's go there. Again, you can only do this at night. Don't worry. The, go the ghost ship is not a one-time photo opportunity. But there's something else that is only one time. And there it is on the horizon at Bomb Island, where it is where the moon phase is now, lies that ghost ship. I do think it would have been a, kind of a nice touch if you could also see Tetra's ship while out on the sea as well, and not just this ghost ship at night. I don't know what it is, but I kind of wish that that was the case. So, we just sail right into it. And we're inside here. We have a bunch of, we have the souls of the dead that are combing the floor. That's not creepy at all. We also have wizards. Redead! Wow, you're a dumb po. Edgar Allen. Ah, no, don't get inside my head. Uh, stop, folks. Ah, damn it. Yeah, stop spawning enemies, you stupid wizard. Robe. Cool guys don't look at explosions. They beat a skull up and they walk away. And that's all the enemies in here. So the ghost ship this entire time was another enemy gauntlet. Great. Just great. So we do all that. I got your club. I'm the stuffles now. Look at me. I got your sticky spiky metal thing. I don't know why it's making him sound like a redneck there. <laughs> Get rid of the club. We don't need it. Before you open that chest, break the pots. There's a ton of rupees that you can never collect again because you will never be able to find the ghost ship anywhere. Once again, it's just like what inspired Phantom Hourglass. And no, our final boss isn't going to take place on this creepy ship here. But break all the pots and then open the chest to get the fifth Triforce Shard. We only need three more, which I'm sure you can guess how we're can get how we going to get them. So we're back out. And it's morning time. So with that, we have oh, we have all three Triforce Shards right here. We also have five pieces of the Triforce complete. However, we don't, we can't exactly see where the, um, where these charts lead, unfortunately. We're gonna have to go to Tingle for that. But what I wanna do first is take out, take on all of these treasure charts right here. 
It's a very long and tedious process, but I am going to upload a compilation of how to obtain every treasure chart and every prize you get, specifically in the HD version. However, before I do so, I am going to go off to Windfall, Outset, and the Four Second Fortress and see the Mapfish dialogue. I know it's very random for me to do, but I'm doing so. Because those are the three dialogues that I have never read from the Mapfish. All right. You already have it on my map. Yeah, thanks. Is he seriously going to have to draw it in, even though we already have it marked on the map? What do you say? Out on the cave of this island, this night is a dancing fool. Can't tell. Day. Oh, so you're talking about the guy who, um, so you're talking about, uh, Todd, the guy that teaches you the song of passing. Lovely. All right. To the four second fortress we go. Sure enough, the map fish was right when they said that there's not a creature stirring at the four second fortress. Not even the spotlights are on. What do you have to say about this? This is technically the time that you can actually come here during the day as well. Because the required time to come here is always at night. Yep, four second fortress. Uh, windfall. Oh, you're talking about the guy who wants us uh, about skull necklaces. Thanks, but I already taken care of that. All right. I'm not going to stop there because we don't have we don't have any reason to. So off to outset to hear the final map fish dialogue. All right. What do you have to say about my hometown or my home island? Technically, it is my hometown. As the final map fish dialogue hint. What do you say? Is it related to the Savage Labyrinth? Is it the uh, Great Fairy? What is it? Wait, I think what the Great Fairy hint was a square next to us. What do you say about this one? I've heard that there's a big head boulder on top of a hill. Oh, he's your hint about... He actually says the Triforce. Wow, can't believe that. But yeah. We have an entire map filled out. We have every map fish hint. They might think that the bait is useless now, but it's actually not. I would recommend you actually still stock up on some if you're running low. It helps a lot for a later section. Trust me, it does. Well, it's a good thing I did because I earned myself a silver membership from Beetle. It's just a reward. He says try uh, for a gold member next time, uh, which I'm not going to go. I've, okay. So here's the, here's the thing about those rewards. You will get the mail. You will get mail, uh, obviously from Beetle. Uh, maybe maybe it takes a day, and he will give you a coupon. Uh, he will give you what's called a compliment card or something like that. If you use it at his ships, he will basically fully heal you. That's your reward for a silver membership. I've heard that a uh, you get a gold membership, and you will get um, I believe what is uh, a coupon for actually re restoring all your items. So your arrows and your bombs and the things like that. I think at least, but I don't know. But yeah, I'm sorry this video didn't turn out very long. I don't know how long it's actually going to be. I'm up to two hours because that's in length of last episode and this episode. So I'm actually going to go in and end things right here. Next time on The Legends of the Wind Waker, I'm going to have gotten all the treasure chart rewards and then we are going to head off to a certain someplace to turn in these rewards. I'm not going to show my, me salvaging them, but I will put together uh, a compilation of how to actually obtain every treasure chart. All right. I know it's going to be a lot for me. So next time on the Legend of Zelda, the Wind Waker, we are going to look for the last few pieces of the Triforce and then also finish any other side quests that we need to do because we're still not done before heading out to Hyrule. All right. See you guys then.